You might have fear about being left alone. Fear of losing someone you love. Fear of losing your money. Fear of the future. Fear of not being able to accomplish something. Fear of, of losing someone's good opinion. Fear over your health. Fear over your child's health. Fear over a lot of the things in the future. Whatever it is, Jesus appears and says, Peace, shalom be unto you. Peace is not just peace of mind. It's peace in your body. You are at ease. Everything in your body, there's no dis-ease. Disease is all at ease. Everything is integrated. Everything is in its place. That is shalom. If you want God to work in your life, then just know this. He wants your life full of peace, full of well-being, full of health. How do you see your problems? Do you see your problems as something that stresses you out, that depletes you, that makes, oh no, another responsibility, ah no, another counseling session. Ah, what, 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 how, how do you see your problems? Amen? Do you see them as something to make you stronger? Something that God gives along, brings along your way for you to feed on? They are fruit of the champions. That's how Caleb and Joshua saw problems. They saw their giants as food. In the story we have before us, we have the city of Jericho. Joshua is now the leader. He's just crossed the river Jordan and he's in front of Jericho. He remembered that when he crossed the river Jordan, this was a dream, the longing of the people of Israel. For 40 years, they wanted to enter the land and they could not. Because uh, fast forward, uh, 38 years before that, they were at Kadesh Barnea. They sent 12 spies into the promised land to spy out the land. But they came back with a negative report. 10 of them came back saying, the walls are so great the people are too strong, too tall, and we are like grasshoppers in their sight. Two of them, Joshua and Caleb, came back and said, no problem, their defense is departed from them. Not a word about the big walls, not a word about how big they are, the enemies. Just saying their defense is departed from them. And the Lord, among the 10 spies, only two of them, among the 12, two of them said, the Lord is with us. And I love this part, and I believe this is a secret of their great faith, Joshua and Caleb. They say that, their defense is departed from them and they are bread for us. The first 10 says, we'll be eaten by them. The other two says, no, we'll eat them up. I remember when Jessica was about three or four years old, her first time to Disneyland, you know, her eyes were like saucers. She looked at all the, the first ride we took was exactly the saucers, the cup, and, you know, the spinning cup. And after one experience, she was like, whoa. What did I get myself into? So I, I saw the, the bit of the tinge of fear in her eyes. And she was only a young girl, all right? This can be quite daunting, you know, to be at a big playground with all kinds of rights. So I told my wife, I'll take the rights first. I'll take the rights first. So I'll take the rights first and I'll see like, ah, she would like this. This is very cute for her at, the, at her level, her age, all right? Oh, this, is not, no, this right is no good. This is frightening. This is scary. You know what I'm saying? So daddy will go first to clear the way for her. The Lord will go before you. So God can be in any place, right? So He'll be in front of you to clear the way. And don't worry, the enemies come from behind you. He'll be your real God. Don't worry about terror. God will be your real God. God loves you. God wants you well. That God wants you well. Why must He go via the scourging and then the cross? Why didn't God just send him straight to the cross? Why didn't Pilate just send him to the cross? Because by his stripes, we are healed. Are you listening? T.J. McCrossan says, if Jesus was beaten, the stripes on his back, left sleevers of flesh, the word in the Greek should be plural, stripes. But if they beat Jesus until there's no more skin left, which the Bible says in Psalms, I look and I can see my bones, which is actually what happened to Jesus. There's no more skin left. Then the singular should be used by his entire stripe. We are healed. With the first stripe, pow, your cancer died. Pow, your blood pressure is gone. Your disease in your heart cleared out. I told you he loves you. He didn't have to go through that. He loved you. I thought God hates sin. Look at the cross. Even Jesus, His beloved Son, the Son that He loved, died a terrible death on that cross. That's how much God hates sin. 
But, but, but I thought God loves the sinner. Look at the cross. It wasn't you and I hanging there. It was His Son. That's the love of God. The first woman that saw Him rise from the dead is not Mary, His mother, but Mary Magdalene, most likely a prostitute. The Bible doesn't say that, but the Bible says Jesus cast seven devils out of her. A great sinner was the first woman, all right, that saw Jesus rise from the dead. And she, when she turned around, she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. So for the first time, he's saying, he used to say, My Father, my Father. Now he says, My Father and your Father, my God and your God. People, because of what Jesus did at the cross, His Father is your Father and my Father. His God is our God. Hallelujah! The same God of miracles, the same God of Moses that opened up the Red Sea, the same God who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who anointed Him with the Holy Spirit, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil and stopping deaf ears. This same God is your God. I'm going to give you five words of grace for you to use. Every time there's a battle, it's a difficulty, say this under your breath. Look at the problem and say this under your breath. Okay? Before I give it to you, let me show you a story, a very famous story that happened in Israel. When the Philistines looked about and saw David, the Goliath has been standing there challenging the people of Israel to challenge, to fight him. He disdained David. When he saw David, he despised David because David was only a youth ruddy and good looking. So the Philistines said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? David said to the Philistine, you come to me with visible sword, with a visible spear, and a visible javelin. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with what is visible, with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's and He will give you into our hands. Right now, memorize this, Learn to say this under your breath. The battle is the Lord's. It's not mine. It's not mine. Amen. But Pastor Prince, uh, David still went to meet the… Yeah, but how did he go? Dressed in an armor? No, dressed as a shepherd boy. With a sword? No, with a sling. So obviously he believes this battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord's. So learn to look at your problems now. And the devil say, what are you going to do about it? Say, the battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. Lord, this is your battle. Lord, this is your battle. Throughout this year, Lord, this is your battle. And the Lord loves it. His arms are bigger than yours. Lord, this is your battle. Goliath, his name means to strip. To strip. So when, when Goliath is shouting at Israel, don't forget all these are really real, real events, real characters, real people, real persons. David's a real person, Goliath is a real person. But for us today, the enemy is not a person. The enemy is what he represents. And he represents the enemy that comes to you and say, you know, you don't have this, you are dirty, you are unclean, trying to strip you of that righteousness, consciousness. Uh, then tell you that, you see, you see all these things happening, God doesn't love you, you are forsaken, no one cares about you anymore. You know? to make you feel unloved. But you, you gotta, this is war. I said, this is war. And that's why Satan's name is called the accuser. Jude 21, keep yourself in the love of God. Now keep here is to protect from loss and injury in the Greek. Keep yourself in the love of God. You must always feel that God loves you. You must always practice the love. Even though you don't feel it, say it. God loves me. Say it. Say it right now. God loves me. Say God gave Jesus for me. Say, Jesus loved me, Jesus. died in my place. Say, I am loved. I want to show you a verse from Psalm 31. Look at this from New Living Translation. For He will rescue you. God will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Say, Amen. All right, that's what Israel did. Amen means be it unto me, Father. All right, He will rescue you from every trap, every trap and protect you from daily disease. Amen. He will cover you with His feathers. Amen. See the imagery? He will shelter you with His wings. Amen. His faithful promises are your armour and protection. Amen. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Or you can say the mosquito that flies <laughs> in the day. 
Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness. You never know. You never know. No. My friend, uh, he never knew he had this, this disease. No. When he went to check up, all of a sudden, you know, I do not know. I, I'm, don't live that way. Do not be afraid. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday, whether it's a bomb or whatever it is. Do a thousand fall at your side? Pastor Prince, are you saying these things don't happen? No. Do a thousand fall at your side? At your side? That's very near, isn't it? Though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Will not touch you. What if I tell you right now, the enemies that you're afraid of is afraid of you. So here Joshua was before the city of Jericho. He sent two spies and the two spies went in at night and the Bible tells us that their entry was actually discovered by somebody. So they, the soldiers started looking for these two spies and they found refuge in a prostitute's house. Her name was Rahab, the prostitute. She said to the man, I know that the Lord Yahweh has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. Think about it. 38 years ago, when they sent the 12 spies in, the 12 spies were afraid of the people that were afraid of them. And, and the people of Jericho heard about how God dried up the Red Sea for the children of Israel. They were trembling in their boots and they were all the time wondering, when will Israel come and conquer us? Amen. Yet, they never came. 40 years, they never came. We are afraid of those that are afraid of us. You're afraid to pray for the sick because you, you, you tend to like feel like an a, a, a unheard voice in the, in the spirit realm telling you, if you pray for the sick, I'll put the disease on you. Hey, listen, what if I tell you that disease is trembling because you are coming? Amen. It's afraid of you long before you lay hands. Amen. Not because of who you are, but because of the name that you bear in your lips. You have the, you have the power of attorney with you. Amen. It's not who you are, it's whose you are. This is the most powerful nine monosyllables. As he is, so are we in this world. If you say as he was, it's good enough. But no, the Bible says the Christ that bore our sins, bore our diseases in his own body on that tree, rose without them. Amen. And the Father set him at the right hand. The Father says, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Hallelujah. That means what? As every day passed, one more enemy under his feet. As each day passed, another enemy under his feet. All the enemies have been defeated at the cross, but they're all been gradually brought under Jesus' feet. Every day you can look forward to one more enemy under his feet. One more enemy under his feet. Things are getting better and better for the church. When I say church, I don't mean building, okay? I mean all of you. Hebrews 9 says, He is now in the presence of God for us. In Greek, hooper, on behalf of us. So we are seated with Him. How about this? Have the same attitude that He has right now at the Father's right hand. Have the same throne attitude. You know what's the attitude? Sit on my right hand. Rest until I, the Father, make your enemies your footstool. And you are in Him. How about this? You still have those symptoms in your body. You still have those challenges besetting you. You still have those adversity, all right, screaming in your face. But the Father says to you, sit. Sit until I make all these enemies your footstool.